Now, here comes the music. Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable, and I have a special guest here. All of you from the great state of Texas. Someone who, uh, again, if you guys have saw, saw uh, if you guys have not seen or saw his uh, YouTube channel, you need to go check it out. The bio information will be in the YouTube channel part. And if you want his information, I also put it into the links below and next to it. So it will be there. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to and see his channel. All the information, go there and subscribe to his channel. As well as we should have our other cast of characters here tonight as well. Uh, supposed to have DJ Unstoppable tonight. We're going to see if he comes in. Uh, plus everyone else. I know it is a Tuesday night. And I know tonight tonight happens to be election night. So some people may be out going to the polls or whatever. So we'll see because we do have people on the West Coast and in different time zones. And we'll see who comes in here. Or maybe they got stuck at their regular job or they got stuck at a gig. Never a bad thing because I know DJ Mike James has a gig sometimes on Tuesdays. Uh, DJ Fire has sometimes gigs on Tuesdays. Uh, and again, if someone's working a gig, they're going to make money. And uh, we'll have them next time. I know uh, DJ Salsa's Matt, he uh, a lot of times on Tuesday has uh, customer meetings. So we'll see who pops in a little bit. Uh, sir, welcome to the show. You want to tell everyone your name and your company name and basically the area you cover? Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on. So uh, my name is Brylan. Uh, I go by uh, DJ B Rise, my, uh, my DJ name. Uh, my company name is Funky Town Entertainment, and I am out of uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, kind of, you know, took the Funky Town and Funky Town Entertainment. It's a nickname for Fort Worth. So kind of thought it'd be perfect to kind of put it in there as a business. So, uh, yeah, serve the the greater DFW area, all the surrounding areas as well. Uh, yeah, just glad to be here. So thanks for having me on. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So uh, usually, you know, when we are on here in the show, so you kind of have an idea, we always talk about some topics. So that way uh, other DJs get ideas and stuff like that and get great information and different djs do different things and have different steps different thoughts on things how to do this or how to do that uh and there, there's there's stuff that i do that other people don't do and stuff i'm sure you do that other people do and uh, us as djs want to separate ourselves from other people in our markets and every market's a little different you know uh dj fire and mike james are from central Illinois. they're very rural uh flop farmers small towns uh, you're kind of like me in more of a bigger metropolitan area. I'm suburban Chicago, so I'm 35 mile, 30 miles west, 35 miles west of Chicago. So it, it's when you're a bigger, bigger area like that. Dallas Fort Worth, a huge area. So you have a lot of things there. I, I, I've seen you do barn weddings. I've seen you do weddings in venues. I've seen you do weddings a little bit everywhere. And the um, the fun part is. You're kind of like what we do. We do barn weddings. We have weddings in regular venues. And you have a, that mix of everything. What is your favorite venue to do? What is your favorite place to go to when you when you get asked to uh, DJ? Yeah, so uh, great question. Um, I mean, for me, it, it all depends. Um, we'll see. So it kind of depends for me. So I'll say, I'll, to kind of give some side story, my wheelhouse, especially with like what I like to tailor to for certain couples, whenever they are, uh, whenever they reach out to me, um, a lot of couples are looking for, especially in my area, in the North Texas, kind of Texas, almost a little bit starting of the West Texas side. Um, they look for a mix of both country Texas country because Texas country is its own genre and a lot of people really stress that here in Texas as well as everything from you know your 70s 80s hip-hop 2000 90s all of rock all of that um so for me I honestly get a good amount of barn venues or more country style venues um and what they're looking for is just that good classic mix of a DJ that can be able to bring in that Texas country but also somehow slip in the hip-hop slip in the pop and, and the rock um, which a lot of times with the country, I will say it's kind of difficult to do, but if you can kind of master that way to kind of really ride the wave and be able to mix all the different genres in, um, the couples in my area, at least that's exactly what they look for, uh, for the clientele that I bring in. But 
I definitely get a lot of barn venues and I'm definitely fine with it. There's some beautiful venues out here in, in North Texas. I mean, it's, I mean, they're beautiful. They're extravagant. So uh, even for bar venues, so definitely love just getting to perform wherever I can really. Yeah. One of the videos I watched of yours, um, you were doing a barn venue and it was warm out and you were set up on right by one of the doorways and you had your, uh, your setup. And his ceremony was outside, uh, like a little grassy area not far away from uh, the, the barn itself. And it looked like you probably had probably like 120, 130 people for that barn venue. The the one thing is that where I I, I look at stuff and look at stuff, I'm like, that's kind of like a lot of times I run into like the wedding. I, 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 a little before this, folks, so, you know, I was showing him some videos of a wedding we just did this past week in Tracy and I. And, I, I you know, I work with my wife, so... It's one of the things that we capture video and stuff like that. And we, you know, I, of course, on YouTube, I do uh, gig logs and put some video up there. But it, it's, it's kind of those times weddings, those 130, 140, a lot of times those are usually about standard size weddings. Yeah, I've had a uh, wedding this year was 225. I've had weddings up to 300, uh, basically 350 people. And, you know, and small weddings, you know, 50, 60 people. But I feel that like the wedding's 130, uh, you know, 120, 130, 140, usually have a great mix of people and have that great dance group. And I saw, you know, you were just killing a dance floor with people having fun and enjoying themselves. And that's one of the things I I, I always feel. And I don't know if you do this or not, but have you ever done, uh, again, because you had that mix of, you, you know, Texas country which you said it's a little different than normal country. So I'm sure there's probably certain artists you got have that in your, your repertoire. Um, and then you have country, your mainstream country, or as I've been told by a few people who are country fans, stadium country. Then you have your right. old country. <laughs> and then you have, you know, your, your people want to hear some hip hop or uh, dance music or something like that. So have you ever done, this is a, this is a little trick, turned down for what into country girl? Have I done it? No. Yeah. Have I heard it and seen it? Yes, I have. Um, I have not done that one yet. Um, I'm gonna steal it from you, buddy. I'm gonna do that now. Um, because I've definitely, I've definitely, I always look to try to see what I can do for that. Um, and it all just kind of depends on the situation. Uh, and it also depends on the crowd. So if I have a little bit more of like that younger kind of crowd, I definitely think that fits. Um, I will say a good amount of the weddings I've done here recently have been a little bit more of a little bit more of an older crowd. So I wouldn't be able to fit something like that in. Um, no, but I, I, I know that's a good mix. I know they, it would be a great one to do. So I'm definitely going to give it a try. And that, that's, that's the other thing you want to make everyone happy. So correct. You know, like the wedding Saturday, it, we, basically because it ended at usually most weddings here at about 11 midnight. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how you do it down there. Basically um, the same. Yeah. And it, it's it's funny regionalized because like here in Chicago, um, we do, you know, for the reception, not the ceremony, for the reception part, we do grand entrance, you know, the wedding party, the couple, parents, whoever's a grand entrance for, and then we go into cake cutting, then generally speeches, and you start dinner, and then after dinner, the way we do the dances is daddy daughter mother son and then first dance because the couples then entice people to come onto the dance floor to dance with them so you know a lot of times most couples and i'm sure you run into are kind of shyer and we ask them would you like to have like the last you know last part of the song or halfway through the song ask other couples to come join you on a dance floor sometimes yes sometimes no depending on what the couples want there's no I don't cookie cutter things. I, you know, I give them suggestions and let them think for what they want to do. It's their wedding. And it's, it's, I give them suggestions of things that have worked. If they don't want to do something, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to force it upon them. I'm going to say, do you want to do this, do that? And that is up to them. It's their wedding. But, you know, that's, again, it's generalized. It's not saying every single wedding I do that because some weddings, like I did a wedding this year where we refer to as an East Coast wedding where they came in grand entrance and they went into a first dance and then uh, like actually cake cutting, then a first dance. So, uh, and then out West in California, they do cake cutting after dinner. 
So it, it's kind of, you know, different. How do you, how do you do your weddings down there in Texas? It's, it's East coast, more like us or more like West coast or it's, it's Texas. Texas does a lot of unique things. How does Texas do it? Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of explain. Um, it kind of differentiates a little bit, but not greatly. Um, definitely not East coast where we have, you know, like 14 different dance sets with first course, second course, third, thing, all that stuff. So definitely not like that way. Uh, very much similar to you. So kind of the standard would be uh, for the reception talking about that, uh, how that would work is, you know, uh, introductions, uh, wedding party, as well as the bride and groom come on in. And uh, usually what happens and it can go one of two ways. Um, we sometimes will roll straight into the first dance for the couple or, um, that will be after dinner. So let's say they're doing their first dance um, during the introduction. A lot of couples prefer to do it that way. The reason being, it just kind of flows. You know, I just announced them in as husband and wife. Everyone's super excited, super happy. Everyone's attention is already on them. They like to say, hey, let's go ahead and get that first dance and just get it out of the way. Uh, we do that. And then so we get the first dance finished. Sometimes the parent dances go right after. Um, but a lot of times uh, couples like to do the parent dances after dinner. So what happens is after the first dance, let's maybe go into the dinner. So buffet, plate of dinner, uh, whatever it's going to be. And then after that, um, a lot of times uh, the the dances will go, uh, either the toast or the dances. It kind of depends, the speeches or anything like that. But um, usually they'll have the toast or the speeches after dinner or towards the tail end of dinner. Uh, the bride and groom might go cut the cake as well. And then during the parent dances after that, is kind of when, you know, they take time to, um, you know, cut the cake, like the um, the people, the the catering service will kind of cut the cake and plate the cake so everyone can enjoy it. Um, and then after that, a lot of times my couples like to look for some kind of what I call like, like a little extra activity, kind of like a crowd interactive activity to kind of do to be able to fill some space, maybe to right before opening the dance floor. So, you know, it's anything from your, your classic and generic anniversary dance to a, you know, a dollar dance, uh, maybe a shoe game kind of, kind of game, kind of style. See, um, here's one of the things like the shoe game. I, 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 we've had the business for, we've had the business for about basically 18 years and we primarily have done weddings. Uh, we're a wedding exclusive company. So all we do is the wedding area. And we've done basically 14 years after starting the business, we started getting, started concentrating on weddings. And probably for the past 13 years, if not more, uh, closer to 14 years, it's been exclusively wedding. And that's the way we run our business. And I, probably can count on one hand how many times I've done the shoe game. You know, it, it's something that I don't know a lot of people like to have because a lot of times you ask questions and some people are like, ah, I don't know. Or it, 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 it's, it's, it's one of the things that I, I feel the shoe game is not, I don't know if it's just because of here in Chicago, it's huge, not huge or like dollar dances, dollar dances come and go. Right. Um, right. Like right now, like bouquet toss are still okay, but garter toss, it's like less and less and less and less because people are like, no, it, you know, my grandma's here or aunt so-and-so's here. I don't mean my new husband going up there grabbing the garter and, you know, and some people are like, no, I want to do it. You know, it, it, it there's always trends, everything, but I, I, you know, games far as like a shoe toss never really took off here big. And one of the things that like this past week we did uh, for the photographs for the tables, uh, you know, we did it uh, to the uh, theme song to Mission Impossible. So sure. we get everyone to stand up and we tell everyone, you know, they're going to run the table to table, table the photographers all on board. Right. With it. And we tell them they got three minutes and 20 seconds, which is about, you know, the the the, the meteor part of the song. And we got it done in less than than three minutes. So they'll hold all the tables. And, you know, people love that stuff because it's interactive, but it also gets people going and, and fun and, and, and again, the bride and groom had to be both on board and they're a little running around. We want to make sure everyone's safe, but it, it, it's one of the things that, you know, I, you people want that interaction with their families, but I, I know if you probably, you've probably seen it with weddings. Um, people a lot of times go to tables and they get caught by aunt so-and-so or uncle so-and-so or cousin so-and-so. And you want to tell them everything's happened from the last time you saw them, which could have been, 
a few years ago. Oh, Uncle John, he got a new car. Oh, well, they sold that car because they got another new right. car. And they go on and on and on. And, you know, well, you know, your cousin so-and-so got, you know, a surgery on his foot because he had, you know, uh, a bone spur and just going into these details and things. And and uh, a couple of times, uh, Tracy, because Tracy is the coordination side, she will run interference run up there and kind of grab them from, the, you know, people. Oh, hey, I need him for a second or two. Can you, they need to come over here. And I, I don't know if you do that or not, or you have someone, you, you one of your partners, you send out there and say, hey, go grab uh, the bride and groom. Go grab, you know, Bob and Sue. Yeah. And so I will say, um, I will say I've seen that happen quite a bit. So my favorite thing is I just try to, I mean, even when you're not doing a whole, whole lot during the, um, you know, during the dinner portion, maybe it's not like you're not mixed, like hardcore mixing, like for dance and stuff like that. You have time to look around. So I'll, I'm actually, I'll make sure to check out my bride and groom, see how they're doing. Um, I'll sometimes go off, you know, to go grab a drink and stuff like that. Like, Hey, what are you drinking? Let me go get it for you real quick. Just to kind of just keep tabs on them. Um, but I love whenever I do, whenever I like just explain, maybe you got the aunt that maybe they haven't seen them since they were 10 years old and now they're 25, 28 getting married and they want to tell them everything that's happened. My favorite is whenever you can just kind of like nonchalantly see the bride, like looking over to her new husband, like giving him the look like the, <laughs> like that kind of <laughs> look. Go, let's go. And then, and, go. and if I can catch, so if I can catch that and maybe the husband can't catch that. First thing I will do if the wedding coordinator or planner is anywhere close to me or the photographer, anybody like that, I will go grab them and be like, hey, go save them right now. Like, because <laughs> they'll just go over there and it's better for them to come over because, hey, can we need to come have you come take pictures over here or the wedding planner. Hey, can you come help uh, answer this? Blah, blah, blah. And they'll be like, OK, Aunt Sally, good to see you. Um, and that's kind of like they're out. So um, I've seen it happen a few times um, and it's always comical. It definitely is. But. It's what you get when you go to weddings. <laughs> Everyone's going to be there trying to talk with you and stuff like that. But they got to understand, I only have so much time to talk to all the 150 people that are here at this venue. So <laughs> I got to keep on moving. And that's, you know, that that's one thing. You know, we have, you, you know, I am sure you do more than just weddings, right? You do per parties and birthday parties and so forth, so on. Right? Yeah, corporate events, social events. So events, again, like, right, we, we, we concentrate primarily you know 99.9 percent .9 of our business is wedding you know um and the reason why is they, I, I just want to concentrate on one area and be right on one area because weddings are very crucial you can't do them over again and oh, correct yeah you know a corporate event is structured totally differently a birthday party is structured totally differently usually you know, a birthday party is you know four or five hours a corporate event could be you know three hours four hours depending on what they're doing you're getting awards out at dinner maybe some dancing or maybe it's no dance when are just background music and, you know, a bunch of speeches, you know, and the thing with, with, with weddings, because the way they're structured and how they are, uh, you know, you have six or seven or eight hours, depending on how they have the facility and your wedding and so forth. And so on, it is a very tight timeline and you have a little bit of movement here and there, but not by much. And it's not because of the caterer or the cake or temperature or weather, is because there's so much to do. There's so many layers to it. And you want to get those layers there. You want to get those things built up nicely. And if you don't, a lot of times what happens is things fall through cracks. And I'm sure, again, you've been in business for uh, quite a while, and you've probably seen or heard brides and groups talk about bad DJs, you know, at a wedding they've been to. Well, the DJ forgot to do X or a DJ did Y or the DJ said A or, you know, whatever the case may be, I'm sure you don't want to be in the same group they are in. And when you sit down with a couple and you try to find their timeline and stuff like that, what are the key areas you look at? Is it overall time? Is it how they want structured or how? they want to are they doing a ceremony not doing ceremony is what are the word the key things you look at yeah so i mean the key things i look at and so um i'll kind of start off by saying so i build so like the way i kind of do my pricing and such i do more of a package route versus an a la carte route um so i have three main packages um my my like my first package my my most like my my bottom package it doesn't include ceremony or anything like that um 
but let's we're not going to talk about that one just because majority pick my middle package or my higher package um it kind of has all the bells and whistles so i mean when it comes to the ceremony of course they are interested in knowing um well actually they don't really know what they want to know but us being djs we kind of know what they're going to love to hear right so my biggest thing is, is i like to make sure that they know like hey guys my promise and my goal is to make sure that for your ceremony, I have two things. One, your efficient is going to be heard as well as uh, for the thousands of the bride and groom. Um, you guys are going to be heard. Your guests are going to be able to hear you guys speak and it's going to be clear and it's going to be professional. My second thing is everything is going to flow seamlessly with the music. And all you guys have to worry about is one, you, Miss Bride, walking down the aisle and not wanting to trip or anything. And then also just being able to speak and do your vows, you don't have to worry about a single other thing. And they always just kind of, you can kind of see their shoulders just go, they just go down like, oh, nice. So that's kind of a great thing to say, I think. And I take it very seriously as well. Um, and then when it comes to receptions, on the reception side, um, I basically try to just tell my couples, and this is something that I want to reassure them of. I like to say, hey guys, we do, because I usually have an average about two meetings, you know, to kind of plan the wedding, the first initial meeting to kind of go over things to make sure there's no questions whenever they fill out my questionnaire to kind of give me the, the running order. And then our final meeting to discuss everything when it's completed. Um, I ask all of my questions there, make sure all the, all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. Um, and my promise to them is saying, Hey guys, we do the planning up front. So that way I am going to be the easiest vendor that you are going to work with the day of the wedding you guys do not need to worry about me. I want to make sure that everything is done beforehand. Now, hey, if something comes up the day of the wedding, I am, I'm super flexible. Please let me know if any changes need to be made. I am so flexible. I'm not going to be that DJ. That's going to be, oh, well, this is what you said a month ago. Like, I understand things change. I get that. They um, have always they always change. Oh, it's, always. It's so show up or so-and-so dropped out of the wedding or this is happening, 100%. that's happening, or we're not doing it. Okay, they want to do it exactly. Do it. Fine, let's go on. You know, a wedding I a wedding I just did about a about two months ago or so. It was actually she was a friend of mine um, that I used to work with. But um, worst case scenario, well, one of the worst case scenarios, the the bride uh, the the bridesmaids and the bride all got food poisoning from what they ate the night before. And so let me tell you, that was a restructure of a wedding. Let's throw out what we planned. And we had to do a whole different, pull different things together because the bride couldn't be out there dancing a whole lot, just going first dance, father, daughter dance, anniversary. Like she couldn't do all that. Like she needed to take some breaks. And so me and the wedding planner really just put our heads together and said, Hey, what's the best way to get this going to make sure that it still flows seamlessly. It doesn't seem too choppy, um, but we need to tend to this bride to make sure she's actually able to enjoy her night. And I mean, she told me at the end of the night when she was feeling a little bit better, she says, you were amazing. You and the wedding planner. She was like, you guys were amazing. Like y'all really adjusted and were able to just completely redo what we planned. And nobody had any clue that anybody was sick. Like it was absolutely amazing. So um, my biggest thing is I like to make sure they, they understand that I want to be easy, easy going, and I want to be professional. Um, but I, but to answer your question though, buddy, whenever I was talking about like what to focus on, um, I like to focus on how they want the night to go kind of more in order, how they want it. Um, like you were speaking about earlier, cookie cutter weddings. I don't believe in that. There's a lot of things that a lot of weddings do or that a lot of weddings are similar in many ways, but I always tell my couples, Hey guys, I have it listed this way on the questionnaire. But like, make it personal. This is y'all's wedding. I don't expect an, any wedding to ever be the exact same as the one I did the weekend before. If you guys want to do something different, let's do it. Like, let's have fun with this. This is your night. I want to make sure that you guys get what you want. So that's mostly what I like to focus on um, is just the the structure and it's how they want it to be. And yeah, and uh, not so bad. I just heard the Texas come out, y'all. <laughs> I heard, heard y'all. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's uh, no, that, that that's fine. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> you know, we up here we say you guys, so it's like, hey, you know, there you go. guys, y'all. You know, it's like, yeah, okay. Everybody's right. got regional accents, so. <laughs> but when you do your, you 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 call it a question or your your wedding uh, checklist, whatever you want to call it, 
Sure. Do you have a online planner or do you send them a document and for them to fill a document out and send it back to you? Great question. So I am currently in the process of wanting to put it online, like do like an online kind of version. Um, but so I actually still do the good old, I, I'll call it old school, old school with a mix of, you know, sending it via email. But I actually do like a, um, like a PDF copy that they print out, they fill out um, and they do it that way. So one of two things, one, some couples might like the ease of online, you know, just filling it out on a, on a portal, whatever, things like things like that. But I've gotten a lot of compliments and not, not necessarily compliments, but a lot of couples and a lot of brides that'll just say, no, 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 this is how I work. I like to have it on paper. I like to write things out like this is actually better for me. Um, so I actually get sometimes couples that say, no, no, thank you for sending this. This is great versus online. Um but yeah, so I sent it to them basically via PDF uh, on our first like meeting or consultation after they book with me. I walk them through the entire thing, make sure there's no questions, you know, um, if they have any questions they can ask. And then the months in between our first meeting and our final meeting, I say, hey, guys, I'm not just here to talk to you guys twice and then just show up on the day of your wedding and say, hey, nice to meet you, because usually we're via Zoom, right? Um, I say, Hey, shoot me a text message. Give me a call. If you guys, if you want to hop on another zoom call, if you guys have questions or if you guys are stuck on something, let me know. I said, I'm here to help you guys throughout the entire process for whatever you guys need me for. Um, and, and that, then I that also, support, that support I feel is important. Oh, for sure. Talking to your clients, they feel that they have a partnership with you versus that, you know, you're, yeah, we are their employee. They're hiring us to do a service. They're hiring us to perform a service. And we're no different, and it just may sound really bad, we're no different than an electrician, a plumber, um, a carpenter. We're not, but we're not building something physical. A plumber is actually putting, you know, you're putting a pipe in or fixing a right. pipe. We're not giving anything physical, but we're a service industry kind of similar to that. And it's all time and material to us. And one of the things we look we have to we look at is how do we go that extra step to take care of those clients? And again, you are kind of like us, like Tracy and I, that you want those layers of communication open. You know, uh, we use have a, we have a Google Voice number. Um, we have we tell people you can text a Google Voice number, and we have people do that. You can send an email to us. You can, you know, you can give us a phone call if you want to give a phone call and talk to us. You want to enter a Zoom meeting? Boom, you know, and this is, you know, this is one of the things I love using is Zoom right here. So that way people can use it. And again, this is great because I got multiple people out here on, on the show. And it's 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 great because the fact that, you know, having that communication um, is just just absolutely awesome. And having those layers there and having those open channels, I feel it supports our couples. Uh, one of the things I, what we did, I want to say about a year ago, we were using the Excel spreadsheet. And we'd send people the, the spreadsheet, they would fill it in and then send it back to us. And then I switched over to Vibo. So that we basically took our, what we call a wedding checklist, took that and made it into Vibo into their template and asked all the same questions and does all the same things. So it's an app on the phone. And we found that for most people, it works very well for them. Now we do still have our template and we actually have, I have a wedding coming up. We actually sent them the template. We asked them, do you want to do an app or do you want to do a template? And sure. they wanted they wanted a template. They wanted to physically write it out. And we have it. They you know they hand wrote everything out. I said, just scan it, send it back, done and over with. So I kind of leave it up to the customer a little bit because some people, again, like you said, your customers are happy. Hey, I can actually have physical paper and pen, write this out, scan it, send it back to you. And then, you know, something I need to change. Okay, no problem. I, I could change it. And that to me is a big thing is having that layers of support and layers of help. Now, the way Trace and I do it, you know, we have the initial meeting and it's been 99% here on Zoom. Um, and then we have, you know, again, open communication, email, text, phone calls, whatever way they want to communicate with us. And then usually probably about a month prior to we have a, another meeting 
And that meeting, we get down to the weeds. And one of the things we also do with that, that meeting, we have them proof the music. So we actually have, because we already got their music list beforehand, we have their music and we have them listen to the music, make sure it's the right artist, right rendition, the right song. We work on a timing, especially we know how brides are. They want to come out at a certain time in the song. My bride this past weekend, she wanted to be one minute and 39 seconds into the song. And because of the song that she picked, she wanted to come in at a special time. And that means something to them. And working out and have them hear it and make sure it's the right time. Because I'm looking at, I use virtual DJ. And I'm looking at the time on virtual DJ and making sure it, virtual DJ is exactly where they want it. I see the valley on it. I'm, I heard it before because I listened to the song before. I said, this is, I think this is the best place to do. Because sometimes we run into it that clients don't know exactly where to put something. They know they want to start at a certain time because they want a certain lyric. Does it sound natural? Does it sound right? And that's the thing we want to do, have that sound, that song sound right. Sometimes you may have to back up a little more. Sometimes you may have to do it a little earlier or a little later. And just so they get an idea and so they have the understanding. And sometimes they want that exact time. All you can do is say, okay, fine and great. You want that exact time, not a problem. The the big thing I, I always feel that with anyone, uh, especially with um with brides and with people is when you look at them and you talk to them, you're face to face and across from them. I feel that's an important thing. And you have that, you know, personal communication. And like you said before, when you had the bride all nervous and stuff like that, you start telling them about, Hey, you know, we're here to help you. We're here to, and you get them relaxed. And all of a sudden their shoulders go down. And they're like, Oh yeah, that is a big thing. That's a physical, you know, showing that, that they have confidence in you. And I feel that's a huge, huge thing when you see, and again, it's on Zoom or in person, because we do this every weekend, and they're doing it once, hopefully once in their lifetime. You know, sometimes, you know, things happen, they have to do it again, but, it, you know, even if someone has done it for a second time, you know, for whatever the reason is, they still have not done as many weddings as we have, you know. And, you know, how many weddings you've been to? You know, I've been through, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of weddings over the years. And it's one of the things that when you have all those weddings you're going to, you know what works and what doesn't work. And ultimately, it's up to the bride and groom what they want to have. Uh, but the thing is that you want to guide that couple to the right spots. And again, they decide they want right. to go off another route, fine. But when you can actually have them have that that basically that mental relaxation, I think it's a big thing. So I agree. When you, um, when you, how, how do you get most of your clients? How do you feel your, you get your most of your clients? Is it word of mouth more? Is it through the knot wedding wire, Google? What do you feel you get most of your uh, weddings from? Yeah. So um, of course, initially like early on, um, you know, as like a young DJ, like a young company kind of deal, word of mouth is definitely the way it usually goes. Right. Um, Hey, I have this great DJ. He did my wedding, blah, blah, blah. He'd be fantastic. I'd give him a shout, phone number, whatever, email. I don't know. And then, so they reached out that way. Um, I also, so for the past year, I have been using um, uh, the knot as well, uh, like wedding wire, the knot, their services. Um, and I did see, um, I did see a, like a decent, I'll say a decent amount of traffic for sure. Um, uh, coming through, you know, through wedding wire, through the knot, things like that. Um, and I, I decent amount of traffic will say, um, a lot of, a lot, and a lot of it was like a lot of spam and stuff like that, but we're not going to get into it. Um, but I also created a website and that is something that I highly recommend. And I didn't do it for a good while. And that's one thing I really wish I did earlier. Uh, the reason being, it just allows you even like you're a professional <laughs> DJ, right? But it just makes you look that much more professional. If you even just a website that can be a landing page, it doesn't need to be the nicest website ever made. Hire a, a web designer to design it for like five, ten k. We don't need that. Uh, it could be super simple and super easy. Um, and what I've noticed is that I actually get a lot, a good amount of traffic through my website as well. Um, and what I've uh, just kind of give a example of what I've done here recently, I've actually, so I've personally stopped using um, wedding wire and the knot as of about a few months ago. And I uh, work, I'm now working with a company that uh, kind of builds my uh, search engine optimization SEO uh, to help drive my website um, in Google and stuff like that. So 
um, I'm still, I'm, I'm getting a good amount of leads through my website and stuff like that. But as the time goes, the more your website will pop up on the DJs near me kind of search or like DFW DJs, things like that. Um, but that's where I mostly get it was from wedding wire and the knot, but I'll say more on the end of people just coming and being funneled into my website, uh, in the forum portion saying, Hey, um, inquiring about this date, uh, what are your, what are your prices? You know, just the, the basic generic question that we always get. So see one of the things with the knot and wedding wire, it does help your SEO, uh, because it's, it's pointing to your website. And again, you have a website, you have your website, your web address, and it's pointing to that. So anyone coming into the not look for stuff, it helps populate more in, in Google too. And it sounds kind of funny that uh, you're paying this money every month to uh, you know, not wedding wire. Even the free landing page helps a little bit on the not wedding wire. The I pay just for the not because not, not in wedding wire for the, if you guys don't know this out there, the Knot and Wedding Wire are the same company. Uh, the Wedding Wire bought the Knot a few years ago, and I've been we've been with the Knot for God. I, I think they're say. called Wedding. What Wedding Pro is yeah, like the Wedding parent Pro. company. Yeah, I, the Knot Wedding Wire Wedding Pro kind of. Deal. I have I have the app on my phone. And, you know, I answer back very quickly. And yeah, unfortunately, you do get spam through that uh, service. Uh, you know, I, I my wedding's next weekend. Uh, uh, are you available? Uh, what do you mean next week? And what happened? You know, you ask that question and all of a sudden, you know, I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of an oil rig, middle of the ocean. I can't answer any questions. I can't make any phone calls. Yeah, you're spam. I'm sorry. You know, you, unfortunately, right. you get people trying to try and scam you, but it, it's, it's like anything else. You have your door open out there to the public. You can run into that. The, the big thing is that, you know, having a website I do feel is very important. And the other thing that we do, and I have up there, I have our pricing up there. Now, not every DJ agrees with me on that, and that's entirely up to them where they want to run their business. But I look at it this way, and kind of like you, I have packages. I do have some all, all car things. I separate my 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 ceremony from my packages because someone can have just a platinum package and not have a ceremony. So they can have my top package, get all the fun stuff, you know, get the Astera lights and DJ, video DJing and you know, movie heads and so forth, so on, and get that package. But they can also get married in a church if they want to, or another venue, and then come into the reception. So I've seen it before when people package in the ceremony into the wedding, especially higher end package. A lot of times people will, well, I'm not getting married there. You give me a discount. Right. And you run into that discount game of, hey, you know what? Um, oh, yeah, I'll give you $300 off. Well, if if I get the lower package and you're charging me six hundred dollars for a ceremony, it should be six hundred dollars off. That, that's that's why I keep the two separate. And then I have on-site ceremony and off-site because I do run into weddings that happen at a remote location. Uh, we've done weddings like at a uh, a park, and they have this you know beautiful little building and with this beautiful look out into a park, and people want to pit you know the wedding out there. And they have the wedding there. And then a couple hours later, I have it at the reception hall. So I do charge a different fee for that higher fee because it's remote work. And if right. it's the same building, okay, or the same, you know, area, fine, great. But if I, you know, if sometimes there's certain venues that you have to you drive two or three miles down the road, like some of the vineyards, I'm sure you, I'm sure you got a few vineyards by you that you made to drive a few uh, miles down the road. That's something you got to determine that is there additional charge for that? Because again, it, it's not really local. It's not like I'm drive, walking out the door, rolling a car, you know, 100 feet away. Um, or uh, like Brian S. Red ran into a barn wedding up in here, his area in Wisconsin that uh, was his track to go down to, into through woods and stuff like that, you know, basically a, a mile away. And, you know, he had cart all the stuff in there. I would look at it and go, hey, you know what? Uh, I need golf cart. I need some some kind of vehicle to get back there. The facility, you know, when I talk to the facility and talk to the facility about stuff, about logistics, that's one of the things I always find out. If it's pretty far away, I want a golf cart uh, because of the fact that, well, one, I have, a, I, have a, I have a screwed up knee, so I'm not that quick. So if I want to leave halfway through the ceremony to get back to play cocktail music, Tracy can finish up for me. 
But the thing is that I want to make sure I can get a quick getaway. So I don't hop in a golf cart and, you know, get taken back. Right. And that's the things like little things like that. You got to go to, okay, fine. Great. You know, do you have those logistics there? And if you don't, how do you overcome that? And that right there is one, again, when I do like a pricing and stuff like that, how I separate things. Yeah. There's some a la carte things you can get, you know, a basic package and add in video DJ or you can add in this. But the thing is that, you know, when you have upfront pricing, the other thing also, you know, people are like, oh, well, these are my pricing, they're not going to come to me. Then they're not your client. And some DJs, oh, well, you know, you're at this venue or that venue. Yeah, there's some venues I will charge an extra fee because they have some odd logistics. I know what I'm getting into if I've been there before uh, or I need multiple setups. You know, there's one venue uh, called Fisherman's Inn, um, which is to the south of west of me. It's about, you know, about 45 minutes away. It's um, basically four setups. So you have one for a ceremony, one for a cocktail. Uh, you have a house system for dinner, which it's a single speaker. It's not a great speaker at all. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, house systems, yeah. I, I, don't don't get me started on house systems. We can have oh, a whole new yeah. episode that's on whole, that. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have your four setup for your reception for your party area for dancing. So all your dances. So you have, uh, you know, you're hopping from location to location to location. And you're talking, even you don't include that dinner setup, you just plug in basically in your laptop or plug in a tablet or whatever you want to use for music. You're still looking at three separate setups there. And then you're looking at teardown. And, you know, I'm I'm blessed to have, not only my wife, we have a couple part-time employees. So they can come along behind and clean stuff up. And, you know, our employees, you know, they can tear stuff down where Tracy's working on the coordination side and I'm working on the music side because I do everything live. I don't have preset playlists. I don't have, you know, stuff that, you know, this is just sitting there, wait, for, here's dinner music. Boom. There you go. It, it, it's, I, I do everything live. So, and I have multiple controllers. I have multiple equipment to do that, you know, and it's one of the things that I always believe because of that, those, those are extra fees, but I want to have people walk into my website and just like you walk into McDonald's Burger King, you walk in there, you look up to the menu, you see a quarter pounder, you know, meal is six ninety nine. Okay, I know my quarter pounder meal is six ninety nine with you know medium fry, medium drink. I I can customize. I can get no onion, no cheese on it. That's what I would get. <laughs> uh, but the thing is that I can customize that a little bit within reason. I can upsize it. I can downsize it. But I get at least an idea of what I want to do, versus someone going to some websites. And then that seeing the price. And again, I, I I believe in being upfront and telling people what they are, but also those people who are looking for the three, four, five hundred dollar DJ, unfortunately, I, I'm I'm not gonna be that way. I'm not gonna be that price range because what I give for service, how much equipment I have, what I do, how long I've been in business for, my knowledge, music, skill, so forth, so on. And you know, again, people want to have that low price DJ. Hey, you know, find it. They're out there. You can find them very easily. I just feel that I want to be up front. So that way those people are not calling me up, wasting their time, wasting my time because they're not my client. You know, the people who want right. to shop at Walmart, hey, no problem. I shop, I, you know, we shop at Walmart for certain things because they're, they have great price points on things. But if I'm looking for, let's say, you know, clothes or I'm looking for, uh, you know, certain uh, things, I, I don't go to Walmart, I go to those specialty stores, you know, I, I you know, I'm a big guy, so I go to a big and tall store, <laughs> but it, it's, it's one of the things that I go to a specialty stores, not because I'm big and tall, because of the fact that I want quality, and Walmart, okay, a t-shirt or underwear, yeah, okay, no big deal, but the thing is, I want my dress shirt, I want dress pants, yeah, you can get some decent stuff at Walmart, but is it the same quality as the stuff you go into Saks Fifth Avenue, or you go into Macy's, or you go into Von Mauer, or you go, and that's why I want, I, I want to have, be in that kind of mindset that, yeah, again, you're looking for that price point, no problem, there's guys out there who probably are as good as I am, if not better, and they may have, may have the equipment, may I have everything they need, but they'll give you okay service, versus I have the equipment, I have the means, I have everything that you need, and I'm going to charge you for it, because, again, time material. Uh, you know, it's like anything else. And I'm sure you run into it yourself when you run into a client 
that you know it, it's it's hard to I can't say not make happy, but you can't connect with because of price. So when you do get a customer that is you know objective of your price, what do you do when someone says, hey, you know what, uh, I'm going to throw a number up there. I don't want no, but I'm going to throw a number up there. Let's say your 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 package is two thousand dollars for you know wedding reception ceremony. They they want your top your top package. But they go, can you do it for a thousand dollars? Do you do that and just take a thousand dollars, take a half cut, or do you say, I'm sorry, this is you know, you can't go to you know, can't go to uh, you know, a mobile gas station, pull up and say, hey, you know, the price up there is three ninety nine, I'll, I'll give you three dollars a gallon, you give me the gas, they're gonna say, hey, right, <laughs> go pound sand, <laughs> right? No, I mean, so in that situation, and honestly, I guess I, I might be lucky. I'm either one lucky or two just haven't been in the business long enough to have to deal with it um, as often. But um, I really don't deal with that too, too much. Um, You're lucky. <laughs> no, I was say I probably am. So I don't deal with that issue of, hey, we want this package. Would you do it for this price? I don't get that. It's usually, um, you know, the couples that are... Uh, saying that let's say they're looking for yeah our budget's around four or five hundred dollars um we see your pricing yada yada uh would you be that i'll be like be like hi like so and i just try to be as kind and just like understanding as possible as well be like hey trust me i understand that paying for a wedding is super difficult there's a lot of stress added to it um unfortunately this is where my value is this is what i view my value as as a dj um, if you would like to work with me based off of that, um, you know, things like that, I would also be willing to answer any questions you have as well as to how I can answer the, the questions of, so you guys can see my value. Um, that's really what I like to push and like to like have my couples understand or the couples that are maybe a little bit skeptical is the value that I bring personally. I think my pricing, I am just a little, I like the, the pricing that I set myself at. I even think that I have undervalued just a little bit. And the reason is I'm still a little bit younger. I'm trying to, you know, build up my clientele and things like that. I don't want to be, you know, asking for top dollar just yet. I mean, there's room to grow. I, yeah. I see. This is where I'm going to, I'm going to differ for you. I see Let's hear it. you do. I've seen your video. And again, uh, don't take this the wrong way. I don't like I'm stalking you right that. <laughs> But no, I've seen your video. I, I, I watch a lot of DJ's videos and gig logs, and I see what people go out there and do. And I see what you're doing, and you are, to me, a top or t uh, more of a top-tier DJ for the, uh, the quality you give, what you give as a product. Could you add some more stuff? Sure. You can add, if you want to do sparklers, you want to do dancing on the cloud and charge for that, sure, no problem. People, you know, those are popular things. I don't because the fact that a lot of venues don't allow sparklers and dancing on a right. cloud. So it's kind of one of those things that do I spend, you know, $4,000 for two sparklers and $2,000 for a, um, a Nimbus and hope for the best. And now we have Matt coming and DJ Salsis <laughs> the last few minutes of the show. Oh man, look at, there he is. What's up, Matt? What did I miss? <laughs> you miss hit most of the uh, show, dude. Man, this uh, yeah, you know, I know I was, you're uh, busy. you're usually busy. Uh, and we're we're <laughs> we have here our lovely friend here from Texas. Uh, so you know, if you guys going? Say hi to each other. Go ahead. How's it going? My name is Brylan, uh, out of DFW, out of the Fort Worth area here in Texas. So nice to meet you. Oh, Mister Mister DJ B Rye. Yeah, there you go. There you yep. go. Funky, <laughs> funky Funky Town Entertainment. Oh, you got yeah. it. Look at that. All there right. See. I, I I watch I watch everybody's gig log that ever gets posted under the title of gig log. Every every day on YouTube or whenever I have a chance, I always just type in gig log and then sort it by date added. So I can't remember if somebody if, posts a video that says gig log. Have you commented on one of my videos before? Uh, maybe. Possibly, because I remember DJ Solstice, I think be either being someone that I either, you know, replied back to or saw that they hit subscribe or something. But nice to finally meet you. Maybe. It was, Matt, yeah. Matt is a uh, great guy. Yeah. 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 Matt is a great guy, especially if you have a question about DMX, uh, how good are DMX are you? Hmm. Matt is someone to keep in your phone book um, 
for DMX stuff. There's a few other people who I, I, I'll talk to you offline about that are great for DMX. Sure. Uh, but Matt is probably one of the best guys for DMX. Um, and he also has, if you want to get the Chinese direct products, he has his lane to get the, the Chinese direct products. So if you want to get sparklers, you don't want to, you want to go to a brand that has a warranty here. You want to save some money and, and get the off-brand direct China stuff. Might have, might, might have been working great. Might have been working great for three years now. 2019, I bought them. Still have them. And that's no the problem. Thing. Awesome. He, he will. He can. He can give you any information. He'll. And he's very honest when he when he's talking to you directly. Um, you know, there's a little more colorful language, but he will tell you something is is, is garbage <laughs> or something's great. And that's what I like about Matt. Matt is, he's very very truthful. If he sees a product that he loves working with, he's very passionate about. Now, does he like line arrays? No, he does not like my line arrays. Nope. He thinks line arrays are horrible. <laughs> what line arrays? Like do you, any... What line arrays do you use? I use RCF. There you go. All right. I, so I've heard I've I've heard the the Evox twelves and they had that trademark RCF sound where it sounds tinny in the highs and it just doesn't sound like a full balanced sound. And my I buddy uses them too. And every time, every every time he posts a video, I can hear it in all his videos, and I'm like, God, it just doesn't sound good. In uh, my videos? I don't know. I just. No, not yours. In in my my buddy who has a pair of them and his videos, like, and I heard them at a wedding show once too, and that's where I was like, wow, these really do not sound. They sound hollow. Maybe that's what it is. They sound hollow. It depends on EQ of them too. I, you, I don't you, know. You need, maybe, you need you need maybe. to adjust them a little bit. You need to you know make take out the mids a lot down a little bit. That's what usually I do. Cut the kick the, the mids down a little bit. So there's always like anything like you know EVs got their own thing with the with either a cabinet or with a, a line array you know it, everybody's got their own stuff but it's one of the things that Matt had Matt pulls no punches so that's a great thing about Matt and if you have questions uh, you know, always reach out to him he's a, he's a great guy and uh, you know um, he's a great uh, DJ out there in California and in SoCal um, and I think love love Ryland... having him on the show. Ryland has the you have the EKXs, right? Yeah, I use the EKX twelves and yeah. then for my subs I have the fifteens. Yeah, I tried the I had the EKX so I heard the EKXs at NAM ooh, back in twenty seventeen, maybe, twenty eighteen. I think it was twenty eighteen. Um and I I loved them there. That's when E V had a big demo room. And so I bought a pair and I used those for almost a year as my main powered speakers. And then I started having issues with one of them just like cutting out. And uh, apparently it's like a there was a bad batch that got sent out or something, because when I eventually ordered another pair in 2020 just to try them out uh, early 2020, I had them for a week and it was causing the same issue. So ever since then, I haven't been akin to buying EV products, but um, they they sounded great at NAM, and, and when I had them with the sub paired with their subs, they sound good. But I uh, here's something for both you guys. And I know uh, uh, I know both of the guys are fans for EV. I, EV, I'm, I'm not a fan for. I think they're good products. It's, it's, I just, you know, again, it's like what kind of car you like to drive. You know, I have a Ford F350 on my driveway. I don't have a Chevy or Dodge. I've had Chevys and Dodges, and they're both good vehicles. I like Dodge, you know, tr uh, trucks. Um, but I prefer I preferred Ford. Everybody's got their own preferences. But here's a cool thing about EV. You know who owns EV? Who actually owns EV for who actually designs your stuff? It's a German RCF. big German company. <laughs> I'll wait. I have heard this. No, yes. Oh, you're gonna say Bosch. it. I'm gonna yes, that's right. That's so right. Bosch right. designs Bosch design the uh the line arrays, Bosch design uh your EKX and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They're a Bosch. They have a lot of input from Germany on that stuff. So they have a right. lot of very technical uh, know-how being put into the speakers. So EVs, even though it's an American brand, they have a lot of European influence into them. And I think that people who are EV fans, like both of you guys like EV products, it, it's like anything. You get into it and you find the quality of it and you're 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 happy with it. Again, I know Matt had a couple of problems with his. Uh, EVs, but that can be anything. Like I have my RCFs. This is because of my stupidity. Uh, I have two of my RCFs in in uh, repair right now, and one's going to cost me eight hundred bucks to fix. So, oh, uh, really? yeah, they they unfortunately they fell off the cart onto the ground, and it's like, oh, nice. Um, yeah, great. Um, 
here's a dummy charge for you. One one seventy nine dollars to repair because it's a couple screws, but one has cost me eight hundred dollars because the board got cracked and uh, somehow or another the subwoofer got cracked uh, too. So new sub, mm. yeah. Mm. I was like, how do you crack a sub? Nothing's touched right. inside. I, I, right. I I I think RCF should do something for that one, but it, I've you had can throw those off a truck. Well, they fell off. They fell off at my yeah. cart. There's. Yeah, you also have the the line array ones, which those subs aren't. They're plastic, aren't they? They're poly cabin, yes. So do you have the or the, the J8s or do yeah. you have the Evoxes? J8s. I've been wanting to. That's those. If I were yeah, to get any, that's... if I were to get any line array, in my opinion, and of course that's a whole another discussion we could have. I would look into the J8s 100. percent That's like the main the one. J8s. I, I I've been a I've been a JBL guy for a long time, and I have. P, uh, PRX, SRX, there's DJ Unstoppable. Everybody's coming right at the last minute. What? The... <laughs> you Bring California guys, you California guys, all come in the last minute. <laughs> yeah, we moved to our own beat. Yeah, I know. I I, I, I should have made this later. <laughs> yeah, he's still connecting, but um, the uh, the big thing is that uh, uh, the polycap. I'm very surprised on because I have. Uh, I have ENs, I have uh, PRX, I've had SRX, uh, and the SRX and the PRX are wood cabinets. I had uh, Yorkville subs, which are birch, fires, heavy as all heck. And I will say that the J8s, the sound on them, they don't sound like a poly cabinet. That's the the Italian engineering. That's good them, to know. That's good to know. It, it's 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 one of the things that I, I enjoy so much. DJ Unstoppable, welcome, sir. It is a pleasure and honor to have you. Man, I got three great DJs here. I'm just missing my other great DJs, DJ Fire and Mike and uh, DJ Mike James. And I have like all these awesome DJs here. Oh man, you know. And then now I only got a couple minutes left before we gotta get off. Oh yeah. I thought you were seven. 7.45 my time, which is 5.45 your time, sir. Are you killing me? No. <laughs> We're live right now on Twitch. Say oh, hi, wow. Hi, Twitch. Hi, Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, DJ Stop, I'll, I will definitely send you another link for next week. I want you on here, man. And, uh, you know, I, wa I, want, I, want, I want you guys on here. So, please, you know, uh, don't think that uh, <laughs> it's something bad, but with, with the time change and time zones, everything is all <laughs> all messed up. You know, it's all different. It, it, <laughs> Brylan, your 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 central time. Yeah, central. Yeah. Okay, so he's same time zone as me. So then I have you know, Abe out there in the East Coast. He's you know one hour ahead of me. I have you guys out there. You know, do you? That's a struggle. That's got to be a struggle. That's hard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> all the different DJs across the country. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to keep up with the different time zones. Uh, <laughs> but I know DJ and Stoppel, I want to talk about a couple of your gig logs because you did some killer work out there, man. You know, Matt always is killing it. DJ and Stoppel's killing it. You know, Funky Town Entertainment. You, I, I, how many, how many people you, you, how many people you working for you there? Uh, so honestly, man. It's I'm just a solo right now. I will bring a like a like a little assistant when I need them, but I'm really just a solo guy. Uh, uh, I realized I was muted. I uh, real quick, I have a question for Brylan. Is Errol. is is what is what a burger as like hyped up as it is out there as as so, In and Out is here? Okay, I'm about to say so, dude. So great comparison. In and Out is to California as Whataburger is to Texas. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I literally right down the road from our, my local Whataburger is in and out. So it's like, I get both. So uh, I'm good, but I'm a Whataburger guy through and through. Um, I do love in and out. Don't get me wrong. I do love it. But just being a Texan, we're traditional people. You got to uh, stick with your, your Whataburger. Well, <laughs> Whataburger and Bucky's, right? Oh, for sure. I, I work right next to a Bucky's. <laughs> I was just there earlier this morning. So, oh, wow. Bucky's the car, the, the world's largest car wash. It's cool. Um, it's insane. Yeah, and there was Sorry, there was Sorry, up in Chicago another Bucky spelled differently for Buchanan Oil of uh, actually in Nebraska that bought 
Exxon Mobil. That's where I used to work at before, before I actually went full time in the business. I worked for Exxon Mobil and Bucky's out of Nebraska bought the Chicago market. And now it's, they got sold off last year to Casey's. So, but they're supposed to bring a Bucky's, your Bucky's from Texas. Uh, the closest is in Missouri. And hopefully I'll bring some up here in Illinois. And here's one other thing in your Whataburger. <laughs> your corporate headquarters is downtown Chicago. So it's a Chicago based company. Because yeah, I know the first one was made in Corpus Christi. I know Corpus was like their first one, but I never knew where headquarters was. So that's actually good. Yeah, to know. a good Chicago to know. company. Uh, it's it's basically an investment firm. They bought right, that, Whataburger. So wait, it, yes, I remember that it was a few years back. Yep. Yes, I remember that whole trade because they were saying that's what it was. Because all the Texas, all the Texans were all getting all riled up saying Whataburger's not a, mostly a Texan company anymore. Blah, blah blah. And I was just like, okay, people, let's relax. It's an American <laughs> company. It's in yeah. America. There it it's is. It's a United States company. And the thing is that the 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 parent company who owns Whataburger, you had to tell me. I don't think anything has changed one bit because they don't want to mess with success, and they no. know. It's me as a Chicagoan and me as an Illinoisan. No, not to mess with Texas. You guys have any bumper stickers? Yeah, no, you there was no, there's been no. You don't change. mess with Whataburger. There's... You don't mess with Texas. <laughs> you don't. You don't. Now California don't. <laughs> can play around with a little bit, but we still have respect for California. You guys are Cali. We have respect for you guys. <laughs> we show we get California love. We get we give California lots of love out there. You know, you guys maybe quaking a little bit with the earthquakes a little bit and. <laughs> you guys go surfing on the weekend all the time, but you know, we still love you guys. You know, you guys brought us Dre, you guys brought us a bunch of fun stuff, you know. So Snoop and stuff like that. So we we gotta thank you guys out there and show you guys love out there in California. But yeah, I was gonna say, uh gig logs you were talking about earlier. Um, the reason that Carlos does events for us is because I found him on on YouTube and saw his gig logs and I was like, Oh, he's in LA, he's he's good, he's got talent, he's got awesome parties, awesome energy and now he does. He's what three weddings this month or two weddings this month for us, and another event on the thirty first he just did. And uh, yeah, so I, I watched a video about like Rachel was on a conference call with this guy Tony, who somehow I follow, and uh, she was talking about like the importance of gig logs. And uh, I'm like, it's not just for clients; it's like for other DJs like that are in your areas to see. Hey, like if I need somebody to cover, how can I know that this is somebody I trust that's going to deliver? And you may just have clean pictures of your setup and some great reviews, but like an actual gig log in action, you know, that, that makes the whole difference. And I think the other thing also gig logs, you know, again, I, I do it mostly for clients, but also it kind of, when you watch get other gig logs, other DJs, other markets like you, Matt, or you, uh, DJ Stoppable or, or, or anyone else, you know, uh, Brylan, you, um, DJ Fire, DJ Mike James, when I watch these gig logs for all these different DJs all, all across the country, Abe Alley, uh, when I watch everyone, the, the thing, it also challenges me too to be better and get better and do things. You know, that's why I, I got the Astera lights because of DJ Bun. Joe Bun got Astera lights. So what did I do? I just keep on watching them, watching them, watching them. Like, I got to do Astera lights. So I'm four grand into sterilites already. So, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a compulsion to, to drive you forward and make you better and, and improve your craft. And that's why I do the show is to help us improve our craft. So with that said, I hate to do this, especially DJ stuff. We just got in here and Matt, you just got in here, man, you guys missed the show. You it's, It was boring today in California. We had, we had <laughs> monsoon weather today. It's been crazy. Wow. Yeah. Well, and today is also election day too. Hopefully, everyone went out there and, yeah. and voted. I'm like, you know, maybe got stuck at the polls or something like that. Especially you guys out in California, being a couple mm -hmm. hours late behind us. You know, you know. Hopefully, you guys got out there and uh, do your civil duty and, and voted and vote whoever you need to vote for. And just want to thank you guys all for still up here. Uh, you know, DJ Fire, wish he was here. Uh, miss you, brother. Uh, hopefully, you're back out here next weekend. Uh, DJ Mike James, miss you too, brother. But. Don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see everyone here, all the social media stuff for the links to their YouTube channels on here. Make sure you go to their YouTube channel, subscribe. If you're watching this on Twitch Live, this will replay on Monday on YouTube. You can find me on YouTube at TBM Productions DJ1 on YouTube. It'll be up there Monday, uh, usually about noon is what we usually schedule it for. And next week, definitely go ahead and make sure DJ Stoppable knows that it's 
seven o'clock central time, central time. So that's two hours ahead of you. So that's 545 West Coast time or Cali time. <laughs> Normal Saturday. time. That way you I'll get be you on time. I'll be on time. Our football right. games start at, start at reasonable hours. I sort of ours. Twelve o'clock kickoff for football. So heck, you know. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't have the fun Sunday brunch, getting drunk on Sunday morning, and watching football that we do out here. Like we, you got to start tailgating at eight in the morning. The, the, the place uh, is they, open at like eight it, or nine. At Soldier Field, at Soldier Field, they, they start tailgating oh. at eight o'clock in the morning. Of course, you got, well, you got the guys, the Bears out there. You know, they got the guys out yeah, there, of course, drinking beer, <laughs> eating you know Italian beefs, and you know, you know, a, a yeah. full of sausages and stuff like that. Going dub bears, dub bears. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> They're all there they're drinking at eight o'clock in the morning, if not earlier. So all right, guys. I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. I know we got a couple minutes over the hour, but thank you so much. Guys, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Until next I'll time. Until next time. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Later.